Okay, another type of reaction is called an oxidation reduction reaction or a redox reaction. So in a, a precipitation reaction, I can recognize those by the solid. I have two solutions that mix together and I make a solid. In an acid-base reaction, I can recognize that by finding an acid and a base. If I mix an acid-base together and I can recognize those chemical formulas, then I would say, oh, this must be an acid-base reaction. And a redox reaction is one where electrons are transferred. So I start with um, compounds where the electrons are associated with certain atoms. And in the uh, product side, those electrons have moved and now they're associated with different atoms. So these are oxidation reduction. Sometimes they're also just shortened to be called redox reactions. So in a redox reaction, it's very, very similar to an acid base. So in an acid base reaction, we can imagine that there's an acid and a base. And the acid has H plus. That's the thing that gets moved in an, in an acid-base reaction. So it goes over here. And then it looks like this. The H was on the acid, and now the H is on the base. This is really, this is all an acid-base reaction is. The H plus goes from the acid and it goes to the base. Well, a redox reaction is almost the exact same thing. We have something that's called the uh, oxidizing agent. I put that on the wrong side. This one's the reducing agent. And this is the oxidizing agent. And now, instead of being an H plus that moves, it's an electron. So in an acid base, I have H plus that goes from the acid to the base. And in a redox, I have an electron, E minus, that goes from the reducing agent to the oxidizing agent. So these, kinds, these two types of reactions are very similar. The only difference is I'm moving, I'm either moving an H plus or I'm moving an E minus. After this gains an electron, it, we call it reduced. After this loses an electron, we call it oxidized. So that part is a bit confusing, I agree. The reducing agent becomes oxidized. The reason it's called a reducing agent is because it reduces the other thing. A reducing agent reduces the oxidizing agent. So then it, the oxidizing agent becomes reduced. And an oxidizing agent oxidizes the reducing agent. So therefore it becomes oxidized. So that part is a bit confusing. It kind of seems like those that's counterintuitive the way those words work. But all, the only difference between acid and base and redox is whether you're moving an H from an acid or an electron from a reducing agent. So here's an example of a redox reaction. 2 sodium plus chloride gas, Cl2, makes 2 sodium chloride. So how do I know that this is an 
redox reaction when I just see it looking like this? Well, we'll, get, we'll find a technique called oxidation numbers, and we'll also look at a technique where we break these reactions in half. So remember, sodium is an atom in the first period of the periodic table, or in the uh, first column. So that means it has one valence electron. So over here, I have sodium with one valence electron. There's two of them. And over here, I have two Na+, plus, two sodium cations. So what happened to those electrons? Well, they're just right over here, two electrons. Down here, if I have Cl, Cl, this is covalent, they're stuck together, and I add two electrons to it, what am I going to get? Well, this had already One, two, three, four, five, six, seven electrons. So when I when it breaks apart, then there each of those atoms is going to have eight electrons. I'll have two C L one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Minus. So um, the sodium, in this case, is the reducing agent. The sodium has the electron, right? Sodium carrying the electron. And then it's going to donate that electron to chloride. So the sodium is the reducing agent that becomes oxidized. And the chloride is the oxidizing agent that becomes reduced. All right, let's look at a couple more of these. So um, it's important to remember what happens when we're talking about um, reduction and oxidation. So you can use a mnemonic device. Oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons. When something loses electrons, that thing has become oxidized. Reduction is gain of electrons. So oil rig will help you remember when something is either oxidized, it loses an electron, or reduced, it gains an electron. All right, so sometimes when we look at a redox reaction, we're creating ions like we just saw. But sometimes in a redox reaction, we don't create ions. And sometimes those are more difficult to see um, how many electrons are being transferred. So that's why we're going to look at this um, oxidation number method or the oxidation state method so that we can assign numbers to atoms even if they are not charged. We can kind of pretend like they are and uh, help figure out how many electrons are being transferred. So here's the rules for assigning oxidation numbers. The oxidation number of an atom in an element is zero. So if it's an element that's all by itself, then it has an oxidation number of zero. Um, the oxidation number of hydrogen is almost always plus one. The oxidation number of oxygen is almost always minus two. And halogens are almost always minus one, unless they're bonded to something that's more electronegative, like oxygen. So I say almost when we look at hydrogen and oxygen and halogens because there are exceptions for all of those. But in 99%, 95% of all of the examples that we use, these rules are going to hold true. Hydrogen is plus 1, oxygen is minus 2, halogens are minus 1. Elements are 0. The oxidation number of an ion is equal to the ion's charge. So um, Cl minus equals minus 1. Um, S2 minus 
equals minus 2 is the oxidation state. So if I have an ion that only consists of one atom, monatomic, then the oxidation state is the same as the charge. They're the, they mean the same thing. If I have a polyatomic ion, then the sum of all of those uh, oxidation numbers equals the charge. So SO4 2 minus Let me write that a little bit more clearly here. An SO4 2 minus the S, the, whatever the oxidation state of S is, and it happens to be plus 6. So S is plus 6, and we'll get to how I know this. I just want to demonstrate what this means. S is plus 6, and there's um, and the oxygen atoms are all minus 2. Like we say up here, oxygen is minus 2. So plus, minus 2, plus, minus 2, plus, minus 2, plus, minus 2. So when I add all of these together, what do I get? What's left over? Minus 2, and that happens to be the same as the charge. So when I add up the oxidation number of sulfur, and all four oxygens in this polyatomic ion, all of those oxidation numbers added together equals the charge of the ion. And I can say the same thing here. All of the oxidation numbers of the atoms in here equal the charge. Well, there's only one, so the charge is the same. So we're just saying that when I add up the oxidation number of all of the atoms, either in an ion or in a molecule, then the, the sum of the oxidation numbers is equal to the charge of that compound. So these rules um, will be easier when we start applying them, and it'll be easier to remember them. But basically what we're trying to do is when we look at um, an equation that has lots of different elements and lots of different atoms, I'm trying to uh, assign an oxidation number to each of those elements using these rules. So let's assign oxidation numbers to H2S. So according to my rules, H is plus 1 when combined with nonmetals. S is a nonmetal. So if H equals plus 1, and I have two of them, then I have a total contribution from hydrogen of plus 2. Now notice that in this compound there is no charge and if there's no charge written up here then we can assume that it's neutral. So if it's neutral then that means that my oxidation numbers have to add up to 0. So if H equals plus 2 and I know that H plus S equals 0 because the numbers have to add up to 0 because there's no charge well, H is plus 2, and what's S if it equals 0? Minus 2. So then I would say that H equals plus 1, S equals minus 2. And you know what? That's the same as their charge if I were to place them in here in the periodic table. So H, being here in the first column, we say has a charge of plus 1. S, being over here, we say that all of these in this column have a charge of minus 2. Right? It goes plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1. So the halogens are all minus 1 because they are minus 1 when they are ions. S is minus 2 because it's minus 2 when it's an ion. O is minus 2 because it's minus 2 when it's an ion. So oxidation numbers and charge are very similar. They're not always identical, but they're very, very similar. And there are lots of patterns like that. All right, SO3, 2 minus. So remember, we want to find the, um, the oxidation number of all of the elements and when, they, when I add up the S and the O and the O and the O and I add all of the elements together, they should equal the charge. And in this case, the charge is minus 2. So that was true in the last one, but the charge was 0. So 
h plus s equals zero. But in this one, s plus o plus o plus o, all of the atoms have to equal minus two. That's one of my rules. So I, we've already done one just like this. I know what, what s is, it's minus two. Because s is always minus two. All right, so minus two, minus two, minus two, minus six. So s must be what? What plus negative six equals negative two? Well, s must be plus four. All right, plus four plus negative six equals negative two. All right, so I started mixing them up to two minus and minus two. Negative two. So the idea is we use oxygen whose uh, oxidation number we know because it's minus two and we use that to figure out the one whose oxidation number we don't know. I don't know what S is. I do know what O is. Minus two, minus four, minus six. So what plus minus six equals minus two? It must be plus four. All right, let's do another one. Um, Na plus Na plus S plus O plus O plus O plus O equals zero because there's no charge on this compound. So when I add up all the oxidation numbers, they have to equal the charge, which is zero. I know that O is minus two. So we'll put in minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two. That's not a two. Okay, um, Na, one of my rules is that, uh, well maybe that wasn't one of, actually I guess that's not a rule, but Na is going to have an oxidation state of plus one. The elements that are in this column can only have oxidation states of plus one. And the elements that are in this column can only have oxidation states of plus two. So sodium can only have an oxidation state of plus one. Oops. So we know what sodium is too. It must be plus one. All right. So now. Minus two, minus two, minus two, minus two. This equals minus eight. And I'm gonna clean this up a little bit because right now I have X, or let's just call it S. Keep it consistent. S plus, I add these two up. I guess I don't need the parentheses. Plus two, plus negative eight equals zero. So if I get S, isolate S on one side, then S must be plus six. So you see how we use the rules. There's a rule that says O is minus two. So when I add them all up, it's supposed to equal the charge. Well, I've got all these O's and all those O's are equal to minus two. So I just put minus two in there. I have Na, and I have a rule that says Na is always plus one. So, and um, although that wasn't a rule in the slide, that is actually a rule. It just didn't make it into the slide. These are always plus one, and these are always plus two, unless they're an element by themselves, in which case that's zero. So um, once we put in the ones we know, like oxygen, we know that, and uh, sodium, we know that, then I use that information to find the one I don't know. S, we've, we've already saw S in one of these examples was minus 2, right? H2S, sulfur was minus 2. And here in this example, um, the S is plus 6, and we just saw another one where the S was plus 4. So S is all over the place. S, I don't know what the oxidation number of S is going to be. I can't just use a rule to find out. But I can use a rule to find out what O is, it's minus two. 
I can use a rule to find out what Na is. It's plus 1. And I use that information to find out what S is, because S is always changing. So um, using the oxidation state method, then we can come up with a definition for redox reaction, which is um, we could say that redox reactions are those in which one or more elements changes their oxidation number. So uh, part of this chapter is going to be looking at a reaction and telling me what kind of reaction it is. Is, that, is this a precipitation reaction? Is this a redox reaction? Or is this a acid-base reaction? So we'll identify precipitation reactions by looking for solids. We'll identify acid-base reactions by looking for acids and bases. And we'll identify redox reactions by looking for a change in oxidation number. If I look at the reactants and products and I see that the oxidation number on an element has changed, then that must be a redox reaction. So one type of redox reaction is a combustion reaction. And uh, combustion reactions are reactions where um, an oxidant and a reducing agent um, react and create a lot of heat and, and light. Um, so generally, you know, we're talking about like a, a campfire is an example of a combustion reaction where I'm burning a piece of firewood. Um, so usually what happens in a combustion reaction is um, combustion with uh, hydrocarbons is that um, hydrogen and carbon react with oxygen and the um, oxygen is reduced and the carbon is oxidized and that creates a lot of heat and light and um, we, we call that fire, the, the effect that that has. Um, but when we <coughs> all right, so um, we have balanced reactions um, by putting coefficients in front of chemical formulas. And when we balance redox reactions, it's similar, but it's a little bit different. When we were balancing reactions earlier, we we're just trying to balance the atoms. Do I have the same number and the same type of atoms on each side of the equation? But when we look at redox reactions, we have to make sure that the atoms are the same, and we also have to make sure that the charges are the same. So balancing redox reactions involves not only the atoms, but also looking at the charges. So one method that we use to balance redox reactions is called the half reaction method. And in the half reaction method, I take the reduction part of the reaction and the oxidation part of the reaction, and I separate them. So it's much easier to balance a redox reaction if we kind of separate it in half first.